sold my Fuji X100V, and here's why. Okay, I, I know what you're thinking. Didn't you just make a video about how this camera changed you as a photographer? Well, yes, you'd be right, but even though it changed me as a photographer, it didn't exactly mean that it was the best camera for me to own. Now, this is probably a hot take on the internet right now because everyone is talking about the Fuji X100V and how it's the best camera that is on the market right now, yada yada yada. But I'm here today to tell you why I sold mine and why this camera may or may not be the best choice for you. So first up, let's talk about what was good about the camera. Now, I did already say a lot of this in my previous video where I talk about how much I love this camera, but here's a few points. Number one, the look of the camera. Because the camera looked like an old 35 millimeter film camera, it was small and compact, it was easy to travel with, it felt like it was a great travel companion, and for that reason it was fun to shoot with, and fun to take more casual and candid photos with it, as opposed to always being a professional photo. Number two is the pictures themselves were really good, they were high resolution, they were crisp, they were clean, and they were just, yeah, overall a high quality picture. And with that, of course, the number one selling point of this camera is the film simulation simulations on the camera themselves. I spent days and days and weeks dialing in the perfect recipes onto that camera, and I loved every single one of them, from an HP5 black and white filter, to the Kodachrome 64 filters, to the Portra 400 filters. I loved them all, and frankly, that was the most fun part of the camera, was being able to mix those up, have fun with them, and really dial in a certain look to your images. But to be honest with you, that's kind of where the list of good things, for me, ends. So let's talk about why this camera was holding me back. Number one is focal length. In my previous video, I talked about how the focal length of this camera being a 35mm focal length equivalent was amazing because it's my favorite focal length. And now while that is true, I did feel quite limited in only having the one focal length to shoot with. Now yes, on the camera you can artificially add a two or three times, I'm not really sure exactly what the math is, zoom on the pictures, but it was digital zoom and not optical zoom, and so you were effectively cropping into an image, lowering the quality, and even though the picture was zoomed in, it's still not an optical compression at a different focal length. So more often than not, shooting with the X100V, I felt constrained in sometimes wanting a wider focal length, or other times wanting a deeper focal length, like 75 or 80, but only having the option to stick to 35. Number two is the ergonomics of the camera. Now again, this is a hot take, but I actually didn't find the camera comfortable to hold in my hands. I felt that it was kind of small, even if I added a thumb grip or anything else to it, it wasn't like girthy or thick enough to hold in the hand comfortably. I know all the range now is making cameras more compact and smaller and fitting all this tech into a smaller form factor, but again, I'm in the minority and think that I prefer a larger camera body. Honestly, I think my favorite camera body of all time is a Canon 1DX Mark II. Again, this is personal preference, but I prefer having that thicker, larger body to hold onto and not this small body that feels like my hand is always cramping up when holding it. And point number three, obviously with the conversation about focal length, this camera is a fixed lens, meaning I can't swap it out for any other lenses in the Fuji lineup, which is a huge drawback. And finally, point four, and this is more for me personally because my career has taken a bit of a shift recently, and that is that the camera did not have the video capabilities that I need in a camera. With it being my travel companion, my camera that I always have by my side when I travel, I wanted the opportunity at least to shoot in 4K60, to shoot at a higher bitrate, to shoot in something like S-Log like the Sony a7 IV has, to have things like a full HDMI port and different functionalities on the camera that were more suited for filming. And okay, really what this all comes down to is that I first bought the camera as a more casual approach to photography, something that I would take a bit less seriously and more just fun. But the more I used it, the more I realized that at heart, I am a pro photographer and pro videographer, and I need a camera, even if it's just for travel and just for casual use, 
a camera that can deliver on those pro features. So then who is this camera for? I would personally recommend the Fuji X100V to someone who, again, is just looking for that fun, casual camera and is definitely not looking for a pro camera. Things with super pro features, super pro functionality, the ability to swap out lenses, the ability to have all of the ports that you need for pro video. Genuinely just like a fun camera. And looking back on it now, I wanted this amazing digital camera from Fuji that would fill the film void in my heart, film photography void. But then I thought, well, why don't I just double down on a camera that I know has those pro features like the Sony a7 IV, and then also double down on something that actually is film, like this guy. This, this is the Mamiya 645 medium format film camera, and I have only recently started shooting with this camera, and I absolutely love it. But if you want to see my first shoot with this camera, you can go uh, click the link somewhere up here. I had a lot of fun shooting this. Now that being said, I am by no means bashing Fuji. Fuji has an amazing lineup of cameras. It was really just the X100V that wasn't really checking all the boxes that ultimately I need in a camera. For example, Fuji has the X-T5, the X-H2, X-H2S, the X-S20. There's a whole lineup of cameras from Fuji that are interchangeable lens, that have all those pro video features, and have if you're like me, a larger body for more ergonomic friendly holding. And at the end of the day, could I have kept the camera just for fun? Of course I could have, but I just found myself not using it as often as I really wanted to, or in the situations where I thought I would use it, so I thought, why not just sell it? And that's it. That is why I sold my Fuji X100V. What?